Oh wait, it's escapely. We're back again, and today we're going to be discussing the second labor of Hercules, which is to defeat the Lernian Hydra. Um, and Hercules returns to Eurystheus with um, his trophies, his spoils from killing the um, Nemean lion. Um, he's sent back almost immediately um, to go out to a different town. This is Lernea. It's a swampy region in Greece. Um, apparently, there's this huge poisonous water snake. Hydra sounds like, you know, hydro, the word for water, um, which is menacing people, cattle, stuff in the area, generally just being a big pain. Um, on the way to Lernia, Hercules stops at his twin brother Ithicles' house, um, and his nephew Iolus, um, as we see here, um, joins him, and he later becomes like Hercules' like companion and friend for a bunch of these labors. Um, typically, his job is driving the chariot, um, so Hercules gets a chance to rest a bit on the journey. Um, when they get to Lernea, um, they again sort of stalk their way through the swamps and everything like that. Hercules taking the lead. Um, and when they find um, this water snake and it rises up out of the ground, um, it's usually depicted as having several heads. Um, we see this Greek vase painting here. Um, Hercules takes out his sword and he does what you do to snakes. You try to cut off the head. Um, and it doesn't seem to be working. Um, the very famous gimmick of the Hydra is that when you cut off one of its heads, two or three more grow back. Um, very rarely you see authors who say that it already had a bunch of different heads and each head just grows back on its own. Um, more often you see that it gets worse and worse with time. Um, Hercules luckily has his like lion skin armor, uh, which was impervious due to the nature of the Nemean lion. Um, so while he's slowly getting overwhelmed with this, he is actually able to put up a fight for a long time. Um, it's Iolus who figures it out. He ends up um, setting fire. Um, to like a dry brush nearby a bush um, and taking a big firebrand from it. And whenever Hercules cuts off a head, he cauterizes it, um, burns it shut with this. Um, one imagines the smell must have been terrible. Um, in any case, when they get to the last head, it just never cuts. Um, Hercules can't seem to do it. So what he does is he steps on it. Um, he has Ilus, you know, put his foot right there. And Hercules digs a deep pit and takes a huge rock. One wonders where you find a huge rock in a swampy area, but Hercules manages it. Um, and they bury the Hydra. They throw what's left of it into there. They drop the rock on top of it. Um, and apparently in some versions, you know, he chisels into the rock, like, do not move this rock, Hydra, underneath. Um, apparently for centuries later, um, if you traveled in this part of Greece, people would try to claim, oh, yeah, that's the rock that the Hydra's under. Um, the big thing that comes out of this one, though, is that Hercules dips his arrows in the blood of the Hydra. Um, Hercules is already the greatest mortal archer who's ever lived. Um, and now his arrows are just that much more deadly. Um, this is a really simple, straightforward kind of labor. It's famous. Um, the idea of the problem that gets worse and worse as you try to solve it, um, you know, makes for a great image of the Hydra. Um, some of you, however, may have realized that there is a small problem with this labor, um, but that's actually something that we're going to talk about in a little bit. But if some of you guys have a little nagging feeling that something isn't quite right, um, just sort of hold on to that, and we'll come back to that in the next one. Um, that's it for this labor. Um, next video is going to be on Hercules' third labor, which is going to change things up just a bit. Um, take care, and we'll see you next time.